So I've already through hiked the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine, so what's next? Well, if you guys watch my channel, you know that within the next couple of years, I would really like to through hike the Pacific Crest Trail on the other side of the country. So because I didn't jump from one through hike to the next through hike, that's given me a lot of time to kind of prepare and think about how I'd like to do things next time around. And one major change that I would like to make from when I hiked the AT is my financial situation. I had been living in Washington DC before the before my AT through hike and there's a very high cost of living there. So unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to save up a ton of money in advance of my AT through hike. So when I finished my hike, I was kind of broke. I wasn't out of money. I still had a few thousand dollars left, but I didn't have a job to go back to. I didn't have a place to live to go back to. I wanted to move across the country from DC to Colorado. So by the time that I secured myself a job, moved across the country, had to put a security deposit, first and last month's rent down on an apartment, all that good stuff, I was flat broke. <laughs> and it didn't feel good. And it took me some time to dig out of that hole. So the next time around, I don't wanna be in that situation. I wanna have plenty of money left over and not have to worry about it. So that is how I've been spending a lot of my time since the AT, kind of trying to get myself in a better financial situation. So today I wanna to talk about the ways that I am saving up for my PCT through hike, whenever that may be, and to give you guys some ideas on if you are planning a through hike. I just have a ton of ideas, so I wanna share these with you guys. So I'm gonna start with the ones that I am actually doing right now, and then I want to transition into just like a few bonus ideas that I have for you guys, things that I have kind of done in the past, but I'm not necessarily actively doing now. And as you guys are listening to these, if you come up with more ideas on how to make more money, save more money, please drop those ideas in the comments, but please don't be judgmental. I feel like people get a little bit weird about money, so let this be a safe space for ideas and sharing information. And just a quick note about finances on the trail, obviously costs can vary quite a bit. They say the cost to complete an Appalachian Trail through hike is about $1,000 per month. And most people are out on the trail for five to seven months, which is five to $7,000. And they say that the PCT is a little bit more expensive. So I have other financial goals in my life. So obviously I'm not only just saving for the PCT right now, but basically I wanna make just, just in my PCT fund, I wanna have $10,000 when I go do the PCT because I figure that should cover all of my on-trail expenses and I don't wanna like cut into other monies that I have for future goals. Like, you know, eventually I wanna buy my own place. I'll have to have money for a deposit. My front wheel drive car is not doing the greatest in Colorado. Eventually I'm gonna to have to replace my car and get something a little sturdier that does better in the snow. So my goal is just to have a, that set $10,000 just for the PCT and that money I want to make extra on top of my normal income. So just so you guys know where my headspace is in terms of finances ahead of telling you my list. Okay, let's get into it. Number one, this is my biggest money maker right now. Oh, also I just wanna say that some of these are making more money, some of them are saving money, like not spending money, and some of them are you know, more lucrative than others. Some, it's like making me good money. Some of them, it's just like a little money here and there, but I feel like it all adds up. Okay, anyway, number one. I've talked about this before. I actually have a full video on that, so if you're interested, go watch that video. It's up there, up there, somewhere. I always forget which side it's on. But anyway, the first one is dog sitting for Rover. So I love the Rover app. I love dog sitting. I'm a huge animal person. I just, I love pets, especially dogs. And so my friend Andrea introduced me to the Rover app a couple of years ago. I had kind of sporadically like pet sat for friends and whatnot. 
before I discovered this app, but my friend Andrea had moved to Boulder without a job. So she was like looking into ways to make money without actually having to get like a 40 hour a week job. And she stumbled upon Rover and started dog sitting for them and telling me all about it. And I was like, wait, why don't I get in on this? Like I freaking love dogs. And how do I get paid to stay at someone else's house, watch their dog, take their dog on hikes, get puppies nuggles, all that and actually make money doing it. So I've been doing that with the Rover app. There's also another app I've heard of called WAG, but I can't speak to that one because I haven't used it. So Rover's really cool because you set your own rates. You can kind of set your preferences for dog size, dog breeds, do you wanna watch cats, do you not wanna watch cats? And how far do you want these places to be away from your home? You can set a limit there. I have mine set right now for a 10 mile radius. I used to have it at 15, but I kind of found I was getting too many requests. So I figured that was one easy way to maybe make the request, the request more manageable for me, especially because a lot of my weekends are taking it up with outdoor adventuring. So I can't be, you know, filling them all up with dog sitting. But anyway, you can also set your preferences to, do you wanna watch the dog in the dog's home? Do you want to watch the dog in your home? Do you wanna do just drop-in visits where you take the dog for a walk? All that good stuff. And you end up making whatever you set your rates at, you make 80% of that. Rover actually keeps 20%. So when you set your rates, you can kind of decide based on that, like what do I wanna actually be taking home? What is it worth it for me? And you know, maybe if it's just for a night or two, you're not making a ton of money, but if you're sitting for a week or longer, the money can really add up. So this has turned into a really great little side gig for me. I am I have like three different dog sitting gigs in the month of February this year. So over time, like this is becoming a really lucrative side gig for me and it's one that I love. It's really fun and it's, it's kind of silly, but like I really wanna get a dog in the future. So another bonus of this, is that I get to hang out with a lot of different breeds and get to know a lot of different dogs and see kind of what I like, what I don't like, all that good stuff. And I also get to meet a lot of really cool people in the community. So for me so far, I haven't had any bad dogs or bad clients or anything like that. I've absolutely loved the experience every time. So this has been a real win for me finding this app and I would definitely recommend trying it out if you love dogs. I will put a link to check it to check out Rover down in the show notes. If you do decide to sit for Rover, do me a solid, use my link, cause I get a little kickback if people sign up under my link. So please and thanks. <laughs> okay, number two. This one is definitely not for everyone, but I have started making a decent little chunk of side money on social media collaborations. So I have a little bit of an Instagram following. I have about 10,000 followers, and this is not something that happened overnight. This is something that I really built up probably over a three year period, but I really had my eye on the prize. I was very consistent with posting. And obviously I wasn't just doing this for the money. Like it's really cool to meet other like-minded outdoor people who also share my love for hiking and backpacking and whatnot. But a bonus of having built up that community is that now I can make money on brand collaborations. So you can, I mean, I really started making money on brand collaborations once I had about 2000 Instagram followers. And this is, it's not like I'm making like a ton of money all the time by any means, but sometimes I make a few hundred dollars a month and my best month ever, I made a thousand dollars. So in these collaborations, I've made between on one collaboration between a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. The hundred dollars is more, <laughs> more often what I'm getting, but I have for bigger collaborations gotten a thousand, which is, I mean, again, that stuff can really add up over time. So usually the brands reach out to me and they're looking to promote a certain product or a certain line or something like that. And so they'll give me very specific requirements on what they're looking for, like one post, one reel, five stories, something like that. And they will most often offer a certain amount of money, but sometimes they will just say, are you interested in working together? And then I'll say to them, what is your budget for this collaboration? And if they say there is no budget, <laughs> it's just product, then I usually won't do it, especially now. Like I used to say yes to a lot more of these, but unless I really, really want the product, then I'm probably not going to say yes because it's, I can only do so many. Like I just don't want to be spamming my audience all the time with collaborations. 
So I kind of have to be careful about what I say yes to and what I say no to. But anyway, most of the time I'm getting paid for those. And also I always have to, just a note, I always have to disclose that. So you have to actually say on Instagram that it's a paid promotion. I usually do like the ad hashtag in addition to that. Cause I, you know, like I don't, I want my audience to know it is a brand collaboration. But anyway, so I do, I am making a nice little side income with that right now. Not nearly enough to be a full-time income by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> But if you're interested in that, like get to work on your social media following and this could be an option for you as well. Okay, number three, I'm keeping my PCT money in a high yield savings account. So normal savings accounts that go through your bank usually have a very, very, very low interest rate. You're really not making any money on this. It's usually like 0.05% interest rate. High yield savings accounts, on the other hand, like right now, it's typical for them to be like 0.65%. So still not crazy high. When I first opened mine, it was 2%. So the interest rate has dropped quite a bit, but it's still making me more money than I would be making in just like a classic savings account. So a few bucks a month, but a few bucks a month over time can really add up. So if you're, if you just have your money sitting in like a normal 0.05% interest rate savings account, maybe you should think about moving it to a high yield one. There are lots of online banks out there that you can do this with. I use Marcus, which is through Goldman Sachs. I know they're kind of evil, sorry, but that's just what I'm using. So yes, that's number three, high yield savings account. Number four, I set a monthly budget and I really try to stick to it. So I actually only get paid once a month. I work for a university, and so that's just the pay schedule at the university. I know it's kind of weird. I've never only gotten paid once a month before, but I honestly really don't mind it because getting all my money at once for the month really allows me to see like, okay, this is my money. What are my bills? What do I wanna have left over to put into savings? And how much money do I have left over? And then I can think to myself like, okay, I have this much money basically to spend. What extra expenses do I have this month that I really need to think about? For example, like I pay my car insurance every six months. So is my car insurance payment coming up? Or do I have a plane ticket to buy this month? Or do I, you know, have whatever I wanna buy that month? And I try to look at my expenses and say, okay, these are the things I'm gonna be spending money on this month. And do I need to be a little more careful with my spending this month than other months? And I really just try to kind of track my expenses and keep myself in check. Like if there's one night that I want to order in some delivery, do I have that in my budget for the month or do I just have to suck it up and eat something that I have at home? So things like that. Like obviously if I'm paying my car insurance that month, I have less money to spend. So I'm probably going to be more careful about not going out to dinners, not ordering delivery, not buying some, you know, piece of clothing that I've been eyeing, that sort of stuff. And I try to keep my spending on those types of things down anyway, but I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. I do have a social life. Even if my social life has been scaled back during COVID, <laughs> there are, you know, fun little things that I like to do here and there. So I try to, you know, make room in the budget for those types of things. Anyway, sticking to the budget can really help me add up my savings over time. Number five, I sometimes work as a brand ambassador. So I first learned about brand ambassador gigs when I worked at a marketing firm in Washington, DC, and we actually hired these people. Basically, they're street teams that go out to events or bars or college campuses or things like that to spread the word for a company about their products or services or special events coming up. So in these kind of brand ambassador gigs, you basically just need to be a friendly person that's not afraid to talk to people. And you can make anywhere from like 50 bucks to a few hundred bucks a gig, depending on what it is and for what company it's for. It can last for a couple hours to all day long. Anyway, there's a lot of different options with this. And usually you can find these types of gigs on Craigslist in the gig section. Or apparently my friend was just telling me that 
Most bigger cities have a Facebook page dedicated to brand ambassador gigs for that city. So for example, in Denver, the Facebook group would be called Denver Brand Ambassadors. And he was telling me that you can find all kinds of brand ambassador gigs on those Facebook pages. So obviously like I haven't really been doing much of this during COVID just because these gigs have been few and far between and it can be a little iffy to be working with the public during this time, but it's definitely something that I will pick up again once COVID has kind of like, you know, tempered down. And it's a lot of fun if you like people because you get to meet a lot of people. Okay, number six, I basically put everything on my credit card and I pay my credit card in full every single month. This might seem obvious, but I think that it's not necessarily obvious for everyone. If you're not paying it in full every single month, then you're gonna end up paying extra money in interest and no one wants to just be throwing away money. But I like to use a credit card as opposed to a debit card or, cre or cash because credit cards tend to have better protections against fraud. And also I love racking up the rewards points and I always use those rewards points to buy flights. So whether I'm going home to visit my family or taking a little vacation or visiting a friend or something, that's one less expense that I have to worry about paying for the flight because I just save up my points and put all those points toward my flight. Number seven, there are a couple of plugins for your, for your web browser that I use all the time when I'm online shopping and they save me a few bucks here and there as well. So these are Rakuten and Honey. So Rakuten basically gives you cash back for purchases. So they have different deals with brands to say like, oh, if you buy anything from Moose Jaw this week, then you're gonna get 5% cash back on any purchases that you made. So it's kind of cool. I mean, especially like sometimes they have really good deals. Like I've gotten 12% back. Like for example, when I bought my backpacking sleeping bag, which is a pretty expensive sleeping bag, I bought it from Backcountry and I wanna say that I got like 12 or 15% cash back. So it ended up being like 80 bucks that I got back on this. And then the Honey plugin is basically, it will look through the web and find coupon codes for you. So if you go to check out, say you're checking out at Old Navy, Honey will ask you, do you want us to look for discount codes? You click yes and they will basically scan the internet somehow and they will find discount codes for you and they'll automatically plug in the one that's gonna be the highest for you. So instead of having to already know a promo code ahead of time, you can just use the, the Honey plugin and they'll kind of do the work for you. Number eight, my car was on a six year loan and I paid that loan off early and so now I take that money that I save every single month and I just put that money into my savings account to go toward the PCT fund. This was also a good idea because just like the credit card, it's like interest that I didn't end up having to pay because I paid off my loan early. So this is just, again, like a small thing because obviously I did have to front more money to pay it off, but now I've got that money to just go into my savings account every single month and I'm not paying as much interest or I didn't end up paying as much interest if I would have had I not paid off my car ahead of time. Okay, number nine, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to subscriptions. So I think that we all have subscriptions of some kind, whether this is streaming services like Hulu or Netflix or HBO Max, whether this is cable TV, whether this is a makeup box that shows up at your door every month, whether this is a gym membership, so I get real cheap about these. I don't have any subscriptions that I don't use. And also I just wanna say that cable is so overpriced. I hope that you don't have cable if you're trying to save money because it's just like one place that's like so easy to save money. I feel like the streaming services are so much cheaper. But anyway, I get real cheap with them. I have Hulu, for example, and I pay for the Hulu with ads which I know that ads can be annoying and like none of us wanna watch them, but it saves me $6 a month to have the Hulu with ads instead of without ads. And over a year, that's $72. And $72 by itself is not a ton of money, but if you're doing this with like tons of different things in your life where you're saving $72 a year, again, that's really gonna add up over time for you. And I used to get these just like fun little gift to myself. I used to get these makeup boxes that were like $10 a month and I stopped getting those a very long time ago. 
but I just thought of it as like a gift to myself. And it was like, I was like, oh, it's only $10. But again, that's $120 a year. So if you have multiple things that you're paying $120 a year for, if you stop spending that money, that's really gonna add up. So look at your subscriptions and if you're not using them, get rid of them, cut those things. And also if you have a gym membership, ask them if they have corporate discounts because many of them do and you can end up getting a few bucks off of your membership every single month if you work at a certain company. So I work for a university and so that university has a corporate discount at my climbing gym. So I save myself like several dollars every single month. And again, that adds up over time. And number 10, going back to the budgeting, I try to cook and meal plan and eat at home as much as possible. I'm not perfect. Like I definitely occasionally go to dinner with a friend or grab lunch out somewhere while I'm skiing. But for the most part, I really try to plan in advance and not have any kind of surprise meals out because Again, those things add up over time. <laughs> so if you're gonna spend, for example, if you're gonna go out to lunch one day a week just at a fast casual restaurant, that's probably gonna cost you $10. That's $40 a month, whereas you know that those four meals, if you just made them at home, wouldn't cost you nearly that much money. And that's, let me see, quick math. 40 times 12 is $480 a year. Did you really need to eat those fast casual meals out? Maybe occasionally you did, and maybe you just didn't have anything at home or you just didn't feel like making anything or you really felt like you need to treat yourself and that's okay. But if you do it regularly, that is a lot of money. So anyway, I try to avoid those things as much as I can. Okay, so basically those are the 10 ways that I'm working to save up for the PCT right now, but here are a few bonus ideas for you. Number one, pick up a side gig. You could drive for Uber, you could deliver for DoorDash. There are all, I feel like, you know, gig economy, there's a ton of stuff out there right now. You could easily pick up a side gig and make some extra cash. And right along those lines, number two, get a part-time job. I don't feel like this is the right option for me because I just do a lot of outdoor adventuring outside of work and I just don't wanna be held down to a part-time job schedule on top of my full-time job. But I know for a lot of people, this is feasible. For example, I have a friend who's a teacher and she bartends on the side. And I have another friend who works at a grocery store. And I know that a lot of those types of jobs are having a really hard time finding workers right now. I'm not saying like, if you're not comfortable with, you know, being in front of the public with COVID and whatnot, I'm not saying you have to run out and get like a public facing job, but I know some people are more comfortable than others. So it just sounds like this is a really good time to pick up a part-time job because a lot of companies are struggling to find these types of workers. And I mean, make some extra cash, put it in your through hike fund. Number three, if you are the creative type, start an Etsy shop. So I have a really close friend who runs an Etsy shop. Uh, the company is called Home to Roost Co. And my friend just makes like these beautiful handmade signs and home decor and cutting boards and things like that from wood that her and her partner cut down on their own land. They do all the processing, they do all the lettering and they've really got this process down and it, it doesn't cost them much money at all to make these things, but they are making bank every year on this side gig. They both have jobs, but they are making bank on this side gig. I'm talking like thousands of dollars per year and they love it, they have fun doing it. She's really good at marketing, she's taken an SEO course to kind of figure out how to come up better in search. So, you know, it's not just like, oh, she's making something and now she's automatically making thousands and thousands of dollars a year, but She's only had this business for a couple of years and she's already making a bunch of money on it. So if you are the creative type and you have skills to make some sort of product that other people are gonna want, this might be a really lucrative option for you. Look into it. Number four, this is actually something that I did when I was younger. Obviously this is only for the ladies who are watching, but when I was younger, I donated my eggs so that people who were having fertility issues could potentially have a baby. Obviously, this is something that you would really want to think about and research ahead of time. Like some people end up having like poor side effects from this, or some people maybe don't agree with this for different 
reasons, but I personally had no issues with it. I don't want children of my own. So I was happy to hopefully help give that experience to someone else. And I made several thousand dollars from doing it and I had zero like bad side effects, nothing. It was a very easy process for me and I made a few thousand dollars. So it, if you are a woman of reproductive age and usually have to be under the age of 35 or 32 to do this, this might be a cool option for you as well. <laughs> Look into it and reach out to me if you have any questions. And finally, number five, get a roommate. So I, when I lived in Washington DC, I always had roommates. I stayed living with roommates much longer than I wanted to because I knew I wanted to hike the AT. And that was one of the ways that I could afford to do so. And when I moved to Boulder and I was kind of trying to catch up financially, a close friend of mine also wanted to move here. She didn't have a job at the time. And so we actually shared my apartment for a while and I was able to save a little bit of extra money doing that as well. So especially if you don't mind living with other people, I feel like I've kind of passed that point in my life now. Like I just want to live alone. It's much more comfortable for me. I work from home right now. It just makes my life way easier. But if you don't mind, like, I mean, I made so many friends living with people when I was younger. And one of my closest friends now is someone I met on Craigslist. Like <laughs> it could be a really good option. So think about the roommate thing. Anyway, so those are all of the ideas I have for you of things that I'm doing right now to save up for the PCT. And also just like a few bonus ideas for you. If you have other ideas, I would love to hear about them in the comments. Let me know. And thanks for watching, you guys. I'll talk to you later.